award music, for music, music, music education. Uh, so it, at, a, at a quick glance, maybe it looks that way, that it's a political message, but um, we wouldn't put it up if it was a political message. Well, I think, uh, as always, we all make mistakes, and I think this is one of the times you've made a mistake. I think you're quite frankly wanting more money and to eventually uh, get rid of our school district and, and as, as a unit, as a, a village, speak about a totally different subject. Uh, apparently you have before you, either now or in your future, proposed changes to the zoning code. And I'm particularly interested in the sign regulations. Because what you have there is something I suggested about six months ago, that we have a sunset clause for some of these signs made in the village. What does concern me is whether it is currently written. I don't have the full thing in front of me. All I have is proposed amendments. And I don't know if I have the complete one. But as when I first saw it, it would appear to apply only to freestanding signs. We only have one freestanding sign that I know of in the village of Green Hills. And that's the old Johnny's Toy sign. All the other signs in the uh, uh, village center area are on the shopping center. And that's what would really be heavily tender living care right? and, and, and enforcement for code and removal of signs. And that's what I was talking about when I was before the council about six months ago. So I think the idea caught on, but I don't know if all of it caught on, because I think you better look at it and see if, how you can revise it or make sure it does apply to all signs in the, in the uh, village center. And another thing, problem, uh, abandonment of signs, it says add a, part of it says add a section 1149.07a. I checked your zoning code about 15 minutes ago, and that applies to provisions under the First Amendment. I'm not saying First Amendment is it's not relevant. I just don't think you have the, the right uh, code number there. Uh, it's, it, it would be under 1149, but it would not necessarily be under 1149.07. It might be uh, uh, 0 .02 something or another. So you might want to check that to make sure we get it because when we have sloppy draftsmanship as far as ordinance are concerned, you end up with sloppy enforcement. And that doesn't do anybody any good. So it's better if we can get it right the first time. And uh, quite frankly, it's probably easier if you put it in front of the planning commission first. It's a shorter route. But I guess no one's thought of doing that. So if it well, starts up here, it goes back. Let's say, Mr. Ward, 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 what we're doing is we're referring it to the processes we refer to the planning commission. They have their opportunity to, to address those I, issues. I, I understand that. What I'm saying is there's more than one way to skin a cat. A quicker way to get a change for zoning, zoning is to put it before the planning commission first. They have their hearings, then they refer, refer it to council, and then the council makes its decision after hearing. If you start out with council, you start here, you go back, and then it comes back. So you save a step if you go up front. Well, so I'm not disagreeing with you. It, 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 adds, it adds 30 days. So that's all I have to say. I just want to check, do your homework. Somebody do your homework. Thank you. Just moments ago, 
you just approve the minutes as submitted on the March 24th and April 14th, 2015 minutes, the, the, the 2015 meetings. I just also want to mention that, that you need to make a, cor a correction to those minutes, including to the so-called approved minutes from the Green Hills Council meeting work session of January 13th, 2015. In each of these mi minutes, it states that by unanimous consent, Mr. Drees was excused due to a prior commitment. Without objection, Councilman Glenn Drees was excused. Without objection, Councilman Drees and Municipal Manager was excused. Excuse me, but in each of these meetings, the mayor never gave council an opportunity to excuse members from these meetings. No objection was ever ever presented on the floor to object to in each of these situations. Only council has the power to, by by majority vote of council to excuse absence. Not a word was said pertaining to Teresa's absence during uh, Village Council special meeting on the January 13, 2015. This is a fatal procedural error for the mayor not properly excusing members. During the Green Hills Village Council special meeting on September 9, 2014, right after roll call, Clerk Lives interrupted and informed council that they need a motion to excuse Councilman Trees and prior to the start of the meeting of September 23rd, 2014, Councilman uh, uh, Council meeting, uh, Kathy Lives informed the mayor of council that they need a motion without objection to excuse members. And these meetings are also missing reasons for said excuse for their absence. As per, as per rule, rule two and rule 23, we have the right to know in the minutes a brief statement of the reasons for making such requests for excuse for, for excuses. I, I respectfully suggest that for future meetings that a motion be placed on the floor for proper vote to excuse absences as stated in rule, rules of council, section 203 and 207 of the charter, which states as determined by majority of council. Um, um, Thank members, you. members need to hold themselves and each other accountable for applying these standards. Thank you for your time and, and your attendance. Great, moving on. Report to the Municipal Manager, you want to back? Thank you, Mayor. Um, I wanted to start with the uh, reading of the first quarter of the year um, public record requests. On uh, January 17th, I received a request from Van Fuller requesting copies of all records pertaining to rebuilt violations or inquiries since her last request, including the Joy Wood and in May. On January 19th, I received a request also from Van Fuller requesting um, all documentation and notes dealing with the electric service which was installed out to the concrete pad um, on Joy Wood, including permit applications, letters, notes, correspondence, permits, violation notices, <coughs> inspections, etc. On January 17th, I received a um, request from Van Fuller for 2014 finance reports, all accounts. Um, by account and by vendor, all revenues, all expenditures. On February 21st, I received a request from a Joseph Packer requesting um, all documents pertaining to any investment advisory contracts in place between the village and any investment management investment advisory firm or any firms acting um, in that capacity on investments. Um, um, any invoices pertaining to the same, any recent investment reports um, or presentations, uh, no external firm was under contract to provide, any reports of detailing investments and cash balances, um, if we participated in Star of Iowa, which we do, please provide any recent periodic reports or simply acknowledge participation or not, same for Star Plus or a CDARS program. On March 22nd, we received a request from Pat Amblon for all contracts of sale pertaining to 30 Chalmers, 26 Chalmers, 9 Chalmers, and 3 DeWitt. Um, also, a uh, request for all the Hamilton County Board of Revision complaints in their entirety filed for 25 to 35 Chalmers, 24 to 30 Cromwell, 32 Cromwell, 8 family, and 48 Cromwell, another 8 family. And on March 23rd, we received a request from Terry Tryon for 
uh, completed sales contracts for the sale of 14 to 20 Chalmers, 30 Chalmers, 26 Chalmers, 1 Drummond, 3 Drummond, 67 Drummond, 80 Drummond, and 82 Drummond, which was the split parcel that went with the Drummond. So, um, those were the requests for the first quarter. Um, now, in the way of other information, uh, we've actually had some <coughs> exciting days. We had um, Arbor Day. Uh, with the participation from the um, cooperative preschool. It was adorable. They, they sang a song, um, which is a really cute addition to it. The mayor um, had also issued a proclamation declaring um, that day, April 24th, as Barbara Day in the village of Green Hills. As Lauren said, donated a tree. It looks just beautiful. Um, it was a really nice day, so that was a lot of fun. Um, obviously, we uh, I'm sure have all seen that the Whitman Road Phase 2 project is well underway. Yes. Um, they're hopefully completing all of the milling today because tomorrow the first, um, the, the thick part on that goes on, and then uh, about a week later we should have um, an intermediate coat that goes on, and then a while after that the um, third and final coat. So that's moving along, should be done by mid May. Um, don't know if you notice, but the pool is now filled with water. <laughs> so it's always a fun sight to see. Um, and we are extending the resident discount through opening day um, at the pool. So hopefully that'll help us with revenues there. And I think we've learned more right now. Questions to the manager? I just wanted to say that uh, we had a with the Mr. Mayor and the village manager at nice time with the PC <coughs> USA in Wyoming. And then the next one is going to be in West Coast, and there was uh, a delightful uh, presentation. And we not only got our regular plaque, but we also got the 30 mm -hmm. year plaque. So that was really exciting. Moving on, law record, of course. Thank you. Um, I guess a couple of items that, that I can uh, touch on as I understand it. If there were some mm -hmm. questions that maybe came up in the last work session sort of sunshine law, open meeting related questions. And, um, as I understand it, maybe it's felt that we should wait till I'm here to talk about those. So let me, I can address both of those issues uh, tonight. As I understand it, the first question, or one of the questions was related to um, actually a, a city nearby, the city of Mason, and some uh, press that, that it got uh, related to uh, a council meeting and related to a rather large economic development project. Um, and I guess here's what I can tell you. I'm intimately familiar with that situation. Um, and what I can tell you is, and I think the, the valuable lesson that other communities can learn and, and why I would bring it up tonight is, um, the question that came up in that case was, that city called a special council meeting. And at that special council meeting, they added a topic um, that was not part of the original notice of, of that meeting. And there was a call into question about whether that was appropriate because it, I think the question was, it seems to not be in accordance with the state law that requires the type of notice that you give for special meetings. I think the valuable lesson to learn there is that um, while that argument was made, <clears throat> the response was that the, the way that special meeting worked was exactly in accordance with that city's charter because their charter provision had, uh, had a special provision in their charter about how notice is given for special meetings and that at special meetings, by a majority of council, they have the opportunity to add additional items to the agenda of special meeting that were not part of the original uh, of the original notice, and that is different than the state law. Uh, so I think the lesson to be learned there is that if there is a conflict between state law and your charter, when it comes to an open meeting question, your charter actually controls. Um, what what was what didn't get as much press, you had to actually look for this article, was, was the one in a different newspaper where the council for the other newspaper um, 
basically said, yes, if there's a conflict between the charter and the state law, the charter controls. Um, you don't have to worry about that because your charter, um, does, you do not have that, that extra provision in your charter. So in essence, your, your charter is actually silent uh, on that. So what that means is you would just follow the state law with respect to notice of special needs. So that's the, I think, the lesson to be learned there is that know what your charter says and understand that that would control. And in your specific case, you don't have to worry about it because the state, your charter basically mirrors the state law. Okay? So that's that was the one question. I think the other question was related to um, a case that has actually just been uh, accepted by the Ohio Supreme Court. Uh, it's a, also a public meeting Sunshine Law question. This is out of uh, Olin Tangy uh, Board of Education, which is up around Columbus. Um, I mean, brief summary of that is um, is that some school board members communicated with each other via email, um, and then at a board meeting took some action. Um, there was a question or challenge about whether that email communication that the board was involved in or most of the board, in fact, all but one member of the board was involved in. Um, I think it's also important to note that the person who filed the lawsuit against the board was the other board member who was not involved in the, in the email exchange. But the basic question was, um, did this email exchange violate the open meeting law? Did in fact, by having this email uh, conversation, did they deliberate and discuss something that should have been deliberated and discussed in a public meeting? Or a better way to put it is, did this email exchange constitute, uh, for lack of a better word, a virtual meeting that, that the public was not, did not have a chance to participate in or, or observe? So lawsuit was filed. Um, went to the trial court in the Columbus area. The trial court um, ruled in favor of the school board and said no, no sunshine law violation here. That email exchange did not constitute a meeting under the terms of the sunshine law. That was appealed, went to the court of appeals. The court of appeals upheld that. So right now we have a low, two lower court decisions that basically said that type of email exchange does not violate sunshine. These, uh, the appellant there uh, tried to appeal it to the Ohio Supreme Court, which of course is discretionary in this case. And the Ohio Supreme Court accepted the case and said, we think this is one that is worth us looking at and deciding. They have not issued any decision on the case yet, uh, but they've accepted it for review. So I think, again, the lesson to learn in this case is, oh, actually, we won't really know the lesson until the Supreme Court rules on this, but I think what you can look at is, um, does an email exchange among the majority of uh, members of the body where they're discussing the public business, is that appropriate in light of what the Sunshine Law says? The appellant that is trying to take this to the Supreme Court has basically said uh, that the Sunshine Law has not really caught up with technology as we have it available to us now, so <clears throat> they are going to ask, they're basically asking the Supreme Court to rule that this kind of virtual, they call it a virtual meeting, would violate Sunshine Law. So we'll have to wait and see what the Supreme Court says, but as of right now, the two lower decisions say that it's not a violation. Uh, we'll see what the Supreme Court says, and then depending on what the Supreme Court says, we will see what the state legislature's response is to that. Um, so there may be changes to the Sunshine Law. Depending on how the Supreme Court rules. How long does something like that take? Uh, um, <laughs> it was, I think, last month that the court um, accepted the case. It hasn't even been briefed yet. I mean, they've set a briefing schedule, so the briefs will be filed. Once the briefs are all filed, they'll schedule, um, I, I would assume they'll schedule an oral argument, unless for some reason the parties say they don't want an oral argument, but I'm certain that they will. 
once it's argued uh, months again, three months, um, you know, versus years. Yeah, I don't think it would be years, but it will. It won't be argued, and you know, and then the next week a decision will come out. It'll be likely some months after that. So we'll continue to monitor it, um, as I do um, all those types of cases that, that go to the court, and we'll see. And again, the response will be depending on what the court says, we'll follow that, and then depending on what the court says, the state legislature may choose to make some changes to that. I think those were the two, uh, the two items that were questioned. And if that's all, then that would conclude my report. Any other questions? Just in, uh, with the idea of the virtual meeting as we presented there, um, would you care to speculate if there is anything in the future plans, as for example, to have it a council meeting when a member of council is absent to have it virtually here? Well, I can tell you right now the law prohibits that. Okay. Right now the law says you have to be present in person to be counted as a toward the quorum okay. and to participate. Um, I think there have been cases where, I mean, I suppose a council member could call in and, you know, on, on speakerphone or something and be and listen. Um, but unless you're physically present, you don't count as a quorum, toward the quorum, you don't get to vote, you don't get to participate. And that's part, that's the law is very clear on that now. Will, will it change? What I would tell you is the um, technology moves at a much faster pace than the state legislature. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing, but uh, I wouldn't anticipate that type of change. Thank you. Okay, Clerk of Council, Captain Lyons. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The April 2015 Community Calendar and Resolution Number 2015-04F and Ordinance Number 2015-02F were posted as required. Additionally posted as required were the April 16th Recreation Commission meeting, the April 27th Finance Committee meeting, and the April 28th Planning Commission meeting, along with the cancellation of the April 27 Streets and Services Committee meeting. And if there are any questions, that would conclude my report. Questions? Hearing none, Chief of Police, Neil Burrow. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. During the month of March, we investigated three accidents. It's down from five at the same time last year. Two crimes, it's down from three last March. 249 other incidents. Total of 763 contacts were made, 309 were dispatched or received by telephone as compared to 135 last March, and 454 were self-initiated by police officers. The department provided assistance to the public in 96 instances, assisted other agencies 56 times. During the month, we made 38 criminal arrests and 85 traffic arrests. We did have some no-cost training that was actually very good training, specialized training. Uh, several of our officers attended an active shooter training that was instructed by uh, a training supervisor in Forest Park at the high school, and they used simunitions or simulated non-lethal training ammunition. Uh, the instructors uh, trained our officers for the response of an active shooter situation at a school. Uh, two of our officers participated in a defensive tactics school that covered taser usage, takedown maneuvers, ground defense, weapons retention, and a review of all applicable court decisions. On a related note, uh, the school district forwarded booklets to us of emergency management responses that they've developed at their school buildings. Uh, we've uh, submitted input in that and continue to meet with them on some tabletop exercises, and we have now loaded um, all of that data into our in-house computers as well as the computers in our cruisers. We did receive two new computers uh, at headquarters which were installed for us by Chip Burquist from Waycross Media in our booking room and in our patrol supervisor's office. They replaced some outdated systems with software that was subject to data breaches. Uh, Chief DeMossi, who is with the Mount Healthy Police Department, formerly Cincinnati Police, he and I met with the <coughs> Clerk of Courts, Tracy Winkler, uh, last month in an effort to streamline some procedures. 
they have uh, regulations in place that require us to take down within a certain time limit, typically the next day, any kind of transfer or appeal from our mayor's court, and also any kind of uh, paper copies of domestic violence arrests. Uh, Chief DeMossi and I uh, maintain that in today's age with technology that uh, it may be more amenable and certainly more efficient for us uh, to transfer that data through the use of scan documents with a follow-up uh, of the original at some point in time. Uh, Clerk uh, Winkler was very agreeable to looking at that. She is going to review it in-house with her IT people, and then we'll be meeting with the presiding judge and Chief DeMossi, and I will participate in that meeting as well. All parties on our end have now signed the agreement with the Attorney General for uh, an increased collection services. We believe this will uh, broaden the impact of our collections and we continue with our in-house collections as well. And as a last note, I know that most of you are aware that we made uh, a heroin trafficking arrest in our community within the last month, and I'd like to take advantage of this forum just in the event any drug dealers might be tuned in. Uh, we'd like to advise them very seriously to discontinue those type of efforts. We're ready, uh, we're able to continue those efforts, and they do continue. We have a strong affiliation with the Drug Abuse Reduction Task Force. Um, and if someone wants to proceed and continue with that type of illicit and illegal activity in our community, um, we're ready for it. Um, we'll take their cars, we'll take their houses if they've got them, we'll take their money, and we'll deprive them of their freedom. So if they want to persist in that action, we're ready for them. Uh, but we hope that they don't. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Chief. And any questions of the Chief? Just a comment, Chief. Uh, you and I have had a conversation multiple times already this year, regrettably, that being a cop is a hard job and it's harder in recent days and months than it probably has been in your career because you didn't start in the 1960s. And I uh, just wanted to thank you and your officers. And you know, you, you see officers on patrol and you think, man, what are they doing? What are, it's a really hard job. I've got a family member who's on duty in the more tonight, and um, it's a really hard job. So thank you for your officers and uh, all that they do. Thank you, sir. Very good. Uh, see, the fire chief isn't here. Uh, anybody have anything to report to the fire chief? None. We had a traffic uh, safety uh, yeah, meeting yesterday. And maybe you can pick that up. All right, and uh, I have uh, the mayor's report, audited court receipts for the uh, month of March. The county received $99, state uh, $2,867, and the village of Green Hills $14,614.84 for a total amount of $17,580.84. Also, uh, Maria touched on it, uh, we uh, attended the Tree City Awards in uh, Wyoming uh, last Friday, Friday a week ago. Mm -hmm. When was that? Uh, anyway, it was a nice day, and uh, Green Hills received this uh, trophy, yes, uh, for a glass, okay. Uh, for 30 years in the Tree City program. And uh, you know, I'm kind of proud of the fact that uh, 30 years ago, uh, I started uh, the village into that program, got the village uh, nominated for it, accepted into the Tree City program. And you can see all each year that we received the leaf for it. And I think when we started there, uh, the city of Cincinnati was in it a uh, year before us. Uh, and uh, I think us and Terrace Park were in the second year. And um, so the, uh, the early meetings for the Tree City Awards could be held here at this table. And now you need a hall to, uh, to hold it uh, because there are so many cities in southwestern Ohio now that are part of the Tree City program. 
but it's a good program, and uh, the village has always had a, a reputation uh, for wanting to uh, have a tree cover canopy over the village. It was started by the federal government, and the people following uh, their days of tree planting has continued on, and uh, I think the town is better for it. It's cooler. Just uh, makes life nicer in the town. So that's all I had to report. Committee reports, community development, uh, Mr. Hall. Yes, so um, a couple of things. One is uh, we had, I should say, I have talked about uh, looking at our brand as a community uh, and updating that. Um, I'm hoping to get back on, on top of that. Uh, I think we could possibly, and I'm just throwing this out for discussion, um, uh, refine our logo a little bit. I think it, it just uh, keep the essence of what we have, but I think it's something that we should um, maybe update slightly. Uh, some of the graphics that are used, I think we could use a, a, a little bit of a bolster. Um, also, as we prepare for our community development meeting uh, in June, if uh, the community has thoughts as far as uh, uh, what they would like to be, see happening and what's under our control, I often hear you know, a lot of suggestions about uh, uh, whether it's school district or shopping center or some things that uh, we have minimal control of. Uh, I know that we are going to continue to stay on top of the zoning and uh, and in pursuit of violations that are uh, that have cropped up now and then. Uh, it does some, sometimes seem like uh, chasing our tail because. Sometimes the uh, violations are addressed, but in a very short-term manner. Um, but we have to treat them as addressed. I know that one of the things that came up was uh, uh, the sidewalk uh, at the shopping center being uneven and a hazard, and there was just some concrete pour over that difference that I'm not sure is there at the present moment. Uh, but uh, when it's reoccurring like that, we do have to stay on top of it, and that's our goal. Um, but prefer a long-term fix. And also, uh, you know, I see it every year in the spring where the litter, you know, once the snow melts, we see the litter along the side of the roads. Um, I, I really would like to encourage people to, you know, residents, I know it's not your job, but if you do see litter out front, it just makes a big difference if you can pick it up. And we've had uh, clean up days, um, and those are good, um, but they're short-lived, it's a short period of time. Um, I, I think we should, you know, definitely take pride in our community. And, and yes, it doesn't seem fair when someone throws a uh, Coke bottle out the window in front of your place um, or even your neighbor's place. Uh, but it does make a difference if we police, um, you know, the streets a little bit along those lines. It makes it a lot, uh, makes the community a lot better. And that is all I have at this time. I just, uh, the date for the community development. <laughs> I, uh, I have it, but I do not have it with me, and that is my fault. Maybe I can look it up on the calendar and give it at the end of the evening. Okay. 22nd of June. Thank you. Oh, that's right. I meant, yeah, the 22nd yeah. of June. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? Moving on, traffic and safety. Yeah. We met yesterday. Um, the chief hit on a lot of the stuff we talked about. One of the things we did talk about is he is working on updating their general orders. And once we have that further along, we'll give a more in-depth update on that. Um, I had asked a question because I saw in the media that there was a gun at the Wentworth Middle School, but then it said Forest Park, so I wanted some clarification. And of course, unfortunately, it was misinformation. It was in Forest Park. It was at probably Wentworth Forest. So it was not in Green Hills. Um, so I was concerned about that. And when it said a Forest Park officer is when I thought that there might be some um, miscommunication by the press. Um, the fire department, we did talk a little bit. The Quint, I believe, has been paid off. And two of their vehicles have been listed um, so that they could get rid of them. Um, they have new windows. and. I believe that's all we really discussed yesterday. Um, we did discuss Damon Road. 
currently we've uh, it does not qualify for speed bumps but that's something we'll continue to hear um, take information about but right now the county um, or the, the county the, recognizes that at the your street is capable of and then we also um, wanted to have ask a question of the mayor if there was a historical reasoning for the parking it's not consistent like sometimes it's on the east sometimes it's on the west and we didn't know if someone had asked a question on that and sometimes it's on the side of the fire hydrant and sometimes it's not was there any kind of this um, no um, when I came here I just basically inherited what the pattern was of parking the only exception change the parking on Cromwell. And so we noticed that Damon switches sides and the reason that it was changed there is because it gave us more parking places. So when it was all on the right side, uh, we lost spaces there. By the church and Drummond and Damon switched to the other side. We picked up more parking. So that's, that's the only street. Everything else has been carried on like, like it was in the 1950s. Um, and, uh, and it seemed to work, so we didn't uh, think about changing it. Uh, and, of course, uh, Mr. Brown out there would know that his street is the only one outside of Jennings that there is parking on both sides of the street. And, uh, and that has caused questions over the years, but uh, when I was manager, I wasn't about to attempt to make a change on their street. They were all happy with it, and the fire truck <laughs> could still get down there, and so we left it that way. The chief of the fire department uses our street to train his drivers. <laughs> because they <it's not. laughs> other thing we discussed was moving currently we have our meetings the Monday of the week of council regular session and we discussed having it the Monday prior so that if there was anything that needed to be put on the agenda there would be time to do it so um, our next meeting is going to be moved to in my calendar up, um, May 18th it was supposed to be the 25th and we'll continue to move them a week ahead of time um, to meet that need I just, have a, I just have a couple of comments. Um, many years ago, uh, there was a question, I would say about uh, the last five to eight years, there was a question on Damon about the bombs and you know, they put a speed bombs mm -hmm. there. Um, the reason for it being that very seldom anybody stopped from the stop sign um, and the risk of um, children running, in fact, People would not even stop at the school bus, but put the uh, signs out delivering the, the children there. So for a while, a lot of the neighbors kept calling the police department to do to do the, the, enforcement. You know, the enforcement on that. Of course, I mean it was they were uh, on the uh, street there, not, not, not even 20 seconds, and immediately they would get uh, the people that were going through. Now the reason for the speed bumps that was given at the time was that it was very dangerous for the fire engines when they had to come at a certain speed to go through any emergency vehicles to go through those bombs. And that was uh, the, one, the one explanation that was given uh, from council and at the time, and I'm talking about, I say like between five and eight years ago, when it first came to, to life. And um, since then in the summer, a lot of residents that are around that stop sign do a lot of gardening and you know things outside to keep an eye on it and be able to call the police department for that because there's some of the, the little kids that just would run and they would not be savvy about to stop and even though they are being rehearsed by mom and dad you know you stop first and you go through the crosswalk and so forth and um, I, one of the neighbors I think three or four um, dogs that had left the home inadvertently had 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 problems with uh, with the cars as well 
So that was back then what the discussion was. I don't know if the, the trucks or the emergency vehicles have changed something that would make that a, a solution. I don't know. I, well, with it being a through street, we just cannot put them on there. And I know it's also, I know it's hard on snow plows for the yes. speed bumps and it causes greater wear and tear. I know we've come across that in my um, professional life. So I do know that's also a concern. What is the solution? What is uh, the enforcement? Is just um, residents, mm -hmm. please call. If you see someone breaking the traffic laws, call in. Um, if you notice it's a pattern of time, let us know that. That way we can give our officers at least some like, okay, you know, instead of getting there after the fact, if you know it always happens around 3.30, then let us know and then we can make sure someone's there at 3.25 if it's a pattern. Just, I mean, it's just enforcement. It's just um, awareness and let the police chief know if they notice something going on and the police will happily enforce. Um, there also have been, and I, I don't know where we stand today, uh, but the village used to retain a traffic safety engineer uh, for advice on these items. And uh, uh, he said there have been studies made on speed bumps that uh, it slows up the drivers who usually don't speed. It doesn't slow up drivers that go fast because a car goes over the speed bump faster it's less of a jolt to it than going over it slow so in addition to the problems that it causes for trucks which had hardly any suspension in play like a fire truck salt truck tractor trailer truck um, it impedes them causes issues with them uh, but uh, right the snow plows I don't know if you know, a number of years ago, the Park District put a bunch of them in mm -hmm. and uh, ended up taking out a bunch of them. And, uh, but if you ran over those at 50 miles an hour, it didn't bother you as much as if you went over at 15 miles an hour. Uh, Not so, that he's advocating that. Right, <laughs> that I'm advocating. Uh, and that the engineer also, who is now retired, I think, but he was a professor at UC, and I regard him. Um, you know, stressed the fact of um, you know, when people were requesting stop signs, you can't use stop signs to control traffic. You've got to speed and that sort of thing. That's not one of the issues you're allowed to use. But uh, stressed the fact that the sooner children learned to be aware of people violating the law, speeding, running stop signs, uh, the better for it. Going to go out into the world and face this all over. Um, and uh, you know, part of his issues in training children uh, to cross streets and things like that was the concern he always had on the Whitman Road, where the speed is higher. And even though we have way to walk lights, uh, you know, people need to learn to use them and then need to be aware of their surroundings and what's going on. Um, so, but you know, it's a never ending battle where we had speeders in town running stop signs and then we have some local people who have complained about uh, people running stop signs in some years ended up getting a ticket for they running a stop sign. If, if I could comment too because I, I that the fact that it's a through street isn't the only reason. That That's kind of the main reason that would stop us right now. But just to tack on and reiterate with the mayor saying there's, uh, there are a lot of factors to consider. Uh, certainly the emergency vehicles, we do have a large business down there that does require an emergency vehicle on a regular basis. Um, the speed limit on the street. Uh, and then you even have to think about where our catch base is located. What kind of curves do you have? Um, the, speed bumps, people think they're an answer and they create a whole different set. Um, a lot of communities that I'm familiar with, they have issues with uh, people get them so fast they go airborne or they flip or they, you know, you just never know what the circumstances might be, but um, I, you know, it's usually not the right answer. They've come up with some different styles now, but those can be available in very limited conditions. Something 
chronic weakness or any of those negative ones. And enforcement seems to be a mess. Yeah, and, uh, right. The uh, one intersection that, uh, that I've received a number of letters concerning it, um, uh, we've added that when it reflecting strip down the stop mm -hmm. sign. I've asked the chief to give me some accident statistics. Uh, there have been, there's only been one accident at that intersection. Um, I checked with the fire chief, uh, assistant fire chief, who's been there forever to see if we had ever had any serious accidents, and nobody can recall a serious accident at that intersection. We've had serious accidents in places on the street, but not at that intersection of Dayton and Springfield. Um, Worse problems in some other places in town. So, um, you know, I mean, that doesn't calm the individual that sees this, but uh, you know, I think that's just the fact of life. Uh, you have people who uh, don't always obey the law like they should all over the place. Okay, moving on. Is that it? Uh, recreation cable television. No, no, fine. 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 Oh, fine. I'm sorry. That's okay. Patient man, I'll wait. Okay. Mr. Drees. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, Finance and Audit Committee uh, met yesterday. Um, March financials were reviewed. Our year to date income tax is 10.8% greater than in 2014 through March 31st. Our year to date real estate taxes are $10,000 less than. Our general fund revenues are 3.88% better than 2014, and our general fund balance as of March 31st, 2015 is $1,171,944.60. Year-to-date expenses are $387,139.09. Um, the uh, questions that uh, the committee had for Matt with regard to the financial report. We discussed the budget timeline as proposed by um, Matt. The tax budget will be prepared by May 29th. We will have a public hearing tentatively on June 9th. And then the proposed passage of the tax budget would be June 23rd. discussion of the authorized authorization of transfers and advances till we do the resolution. Uh, the bonds that are currently being uh, refinanced, uh, we should hear by May 1st on a new interest rate on those. Those are out of the marketplace right now. Uh, as you are aware, um, we are up for an audit this year. The auditor's office has awarded the bid for the audit for Green Hills, not been notified as to whom it will be. Um, and um, since this involves revenue, I guess this is a little stretch for the finance report, but I'll make it anyway. The Junior Golf League, of course there's a fee for it, so there's revenue, uh, will be on Fridays at 9 o'clock in the morning. So if you have a young, aspiring golfer, male or female, um, you can sign them up for it. Cable television. Report from Mr. Hermes. Have anything? No. Okay. Intergovernmental affairs, laws, and rules. Mr. Lee. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, the uh, Committee for Intergovernmental Affairs, Laws, and Rules met <coughs> yesterday on April 27th. Um, the topics that, that, that were discussed were uh, some proposed changes to the handbook uh, by staff um, those uh, as, as well as a, uh, a, a list of uh, supplemental questions that, that uh, uh, were was presented for clarification um, those changes uh, once further discussed by staff uh, will, will come to the uh, uh, council at, at uh, some 
also a, a follow up on the uh, this dog uh, ordinance that, that uh, we, we were considering um, after further discussion with, with the chief he's uh, comfortable with uh, leaving that that uh, current ordinance that we have on the books as is Address that and, and really in clarifying that it, it seemed as if we were already at the point that where, where the fees and the uh, uh, penalties involved in those incidents uh, were consistent with what we were trying to do anyway. Um, well, we also discussed. Proposed uh, change in enforcement regarding uh, garage doors um, that that uh, be, would take place rather rather than an amendment or an addition uh, to the current section uh, section would, would be uh, just a clarification in, in the current enforcement. Um, that was. Services Streets and uh, Member Walter. Well, if we welcome the, uh, the changes on Lincoln Road, um, the phase two, the pavement uh, has been started April 27th. I mean, we just, I knew it immediately because I got a text from my husband saying, we've started on Lincoln Road. That's all it said. I knew what was happening. Um, and you explained all of that in great detail. Um, the painting on the service building, we're still waiting for that. Um, it's under um, their warranty, um, but uh, with the changes of the weather that we have with the frost, et cetera, back and forth, it's not advisable at this time. And we have to wait for the vendor to be scheduled, to, to be scheduling for the painting of the service building. Malloy's, the service department is placing, replacing one of the back decks at Malloy's that had rotted significantly. And those are the main things. We didn't have a meeting because we are still waiting with great anticipation with some monies from coming from Hamilton County. Um, and the meeting has been postponed several times, have been canceled, and the, the big meeting is tomorrow. I'm going to try to make it there um, with the commissioner's meeting. And there's going to be a competition of parking with the Reds, I believe, tomorrow as well. So we'll see who wins on that one. Um, I wanted to also. Um, Tell Mr. Mayor that um, on 4:13 I was present at the Student Achievement Committee, and uh, there were still several things that is on, on planning um, having to do with that. Uh, we were invited to attend one of the organizational meetings with the, with them at the time. Um, I also wanted to um, tell Mr. Mayor that Eddie Deschamps sends his regards. He's official official now as candidate for presidency for uh, the Congo, and I don't know if you remember last summer he came here, and uh, he thinks that uh, the answer of all his problems is to have the second Green Hills there. Um, I went to the Good Catch uh, game uh, representing Green Hills on 426, although the game very seldom occurs was postponed. They had uh, some, um, while you're waiting for the national anthem, which is school is going to be dismissed by the time we, they, they have a good catch day again. They waited and waited. We had the chief, uh, fire chief from Finney Town that he had to go. Um, so um, we're rescheduling that uh, actual, the, the uh, first pitch and the uh, catch um, for May the uh, 30th. Um, but um, we were, it was inter interesting to be sort of um, in the bowels of the, of the stadium and having all this um, secrecy on how to get there and human beings surrounding you every step of the way even to go to, even, even to, go to the bathroom. You should not be left alone. Um, but it was, um, it was an all in good fun and uh, we just waited hour after hour and finally, they, they gave, we left um, because we said we couldn't wait any longer. We had, we had arrived there at 11 o'clock, and um, 
uh, we were there until 3.15, and at that point, we said, they may not call the game off, but we can't stay any further, especially when the uh, fire chief had to leave. He received the call and had to go. Um, I attended the uh, laws and rules uh, meeting on Monday uh, with Chairman uh, Mr. Lee. And um, tomorrow, I guess, um, if you don't remember, we have the Hamilton County Municipal Legion. Uh, we have the, um, the, the meeting that we have now every two months, instead of every month that we used to have at Shadow Fairfax. And I have accepted to, to attend there. I will give you some reports back when I do come back with uh, the latest news there. And um, that's my report for today.